Good morning. I like to start my weekend mornings off being either at Mission Bay or a beach. I just like to be at the coast, especially with Willow, because my weekends are so jam-packed. I like to get her out of the house and have some playtime before she's cooped up for the rest of the weekend, but she is used to it. But we're gonna come here. We came here, we're gonna go to Super Bloom, which is a really cute cafe here. They get some coffee, hopefully a bagel. I always crave bagels on the weekends. Bagels, croissants. That is my jam, so we're probably gonna get a bagel if they have them, but I, I think they do. We're gonna see though. We're gonna go to Oceanside today. We gotta go to my listing, go to my open house. I got a bunch of stuff to do, and I'm gonna take you along for the ride. Let's go. Starting your mornings off right really sets the precedent for that day. It took me years to train myself to become a morning person, but now I wake up before the sun most days and absolutely love my mornings. Being able to drive five minutes to the ocean to start my mornings off like this is something I will never take for granted. Now just waiting for the sun to grace us with all her glory. We're in June gloom, so the weather's not perfect, but this is on the other side of where I'm at is Fiesta Island and this is the bay. The bay only gets like 12 to 20 feet deep so it's not that deep and what's really cool is Fiesta Island it's kind of like a day camping spot. People will go there with their dogs and in the summertime it gets really packed. People just bring campers out there and you can go float, bring a floaty and I, you know, anchor yourself and go float in the water. It's, it's a really cool place. And this year it was actually, there was <clears throat> wildflowers. I want to say one of the first times it's happened because we got so much rain and I didn't get a shot of it. I'm so mad at myself, but maybe next year we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see how much rain we get. But the other side of here is can't see it but this is where SeaWorld's gonna be and the other side of Fiesta Island over there that's when you start heading into the bay side of um, Mission Beach and Pacific Beach and then there's this bike path that takes you all the way around the bay so you can spend a day out here all right it's about 9 30 so we're gonna head home and get ready for the day all right we are doing the <laughs> daunting task of getting ready, which takes way too long. I always envy men because they can get ready in like 15 minutes. It takes me a lot longer than 15 minutes. <laughs> but I enjoy doing my makeup, so while I do my makeup, I'm gonna tell a little story about really when my life changed. So one question I wanna ask you is, are you the type of person where things happen to you or for you. So the moment when my whole perspective changed and I started thinking that things were happening for me instead of to me was in 2016. So I had gotten, I've been in real estate since 2013. I got my real estate license in 2015. And my first year I actually sold two homes, which I think is really good because I didn't get my license until June. Yes, yeah, so June 9th. And I know that because I just had to redo all my coursework. So you have to renew your license every four years. So I just did that for the second time. So June 9th, I got my license. So by the end of 2015, I sold two homes. So I was like, this is great, <laughs> I got this. And then 2016 came around and I really just felt like I had no idea what I was doing. I joined a team and the team was great. I learned so much from this team but I wasn't really making any sales. So uh, I think I didn't make a sale until September of that year. So I'm thinking, no, 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 I'm sorry. I didn't make a sale until the following year in 2017. So all of 2016, no sales. And I was making money being an assistant. So I was assisting on a team and I was also an agent on the team. But so I was at least bringing home money for that year, but it's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a realtor, I wanted to sell homes. So all of 2016, didn't make any sales, but I took that year as a learning year because I worked on a great team and they taught me so, so much. Things that I still use to this day and will always. So 2017 came around and I had all these dues that I had to pay. 
So when you're a licensed agent, you have to pay for your board dues, you have to pay for your MLS. There's a million things you have to pay for. And it was the end of the year, all of these were due. So December, 2016, all these were due. And I'm going, I'm gonna have to get out of real estate. I did not have any money to pay for this. I think it was like a thousand dollars total. And so what I did is I was really contemplating, I was looking at restaurant jobs and thinking, okay, what am I going to do with my life? Cause obviously I'm failing at being a realtor. So what am I gonna do with the rest of my life? I didn't finish college. I was going to college for a psychology major and I decided, uh, what am I going to do with this? <laughs> so I didn't and I got into real estate instead. So I was heartbroken. I really was. I love this team. I loved real estate. You know, I'd been in it for three years at this time and I was heartbroken. I'm like, I'm going to have to leave this industry. I remember talking to my friend and telling her she's my best friend. And I remember telling her, I don't know what to do. I don't have money to pay for this. And if I can't pay my board dues, I can't practice real estate. I can't sell real estate. So one day I am at the mailbox picking up my mail and I get this check, which of course I think is a bill, but it was a check. It's a check for like $750. And it was from college. It was a reimbursement check from the school I went to, uh, basically stating that they owed me money. And now at this point, this is 2016, the end of 2016. I hadn't been in school since 2011, 12. So to my surprise, I'm like, where is this check coming from? And at that moment, I decided this was a sign. This was a sign that I was meant to sell real estate. And the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, was basically saying, you are going to stay in this industry here you go. So because I received that check, I was able to pay my board dues. And that following year in 2017, I made 150,000 selling real estate. And if I wouldn't have received that check, I don't know what I would be doing. So when that happened to me, I made the decision that everything works out. Things happen for a reason. And that's what I've been telling myself ever since. And I truly do believe that everything works out. So fast forward to 2021. Now I've been selling successfully, you know, making multiple six figures a year in the Bay Area. And I decide to move down to Southern California. And everybody's going, you're crazy. You know, all my friends, of course, supported me. But it was like, what are you going to do? You're going to have to start all over. And I knew that, but I also knew something that I've been telling myself for years now, that things happen for a reason, that everything will work out. I truly felt it in my bones and I still do feel that everything works out. Don't stress about it. Don't hold yourself back because you're scared because it works out. You just have to have a positive mindset around whatever it is. So that was it, 2016, the end of 2016, going into 2017, I got that check and it completely changed my life. And I don't, honestly, I have no idea what the check was for. I could not figure it out. It didn't make any sense to me why they would owe me money. It really didn't make any sense to me, but I was <laughs> thankful and grateful nonetheless. And I think about that check all the time. So fast forward. And now I'm in San Diego and I did restart my business and it's been great. When I first moved here, I worked on referrals from the Bay Area. There's a lot of people up north that have a lot of money and especially with COVID and remote work that a lot of people were starting to relocate to other parts of the country and the state. So I saw a big opportunity to tap into my network of people in the Bay Area and capture those that are wanting to relocate to San Diego. And kicker, a lot of them ha make, you know, have the Bay Area salary, but they work remotely and then they are able to buy a house in San Diego. So that is what I did. 
and now it's been two years since I've been down here and it was the best decision I ever made. But it really is because my mindset shifted and I started thinking that things are happening for me, not to me. And I just have every bone in my body feels that things will work out the way that they're supposed to. They will work out. And if they don't, it's going to redirect you to something better. And that's how you have to think about it. It's going to redirect you to something better in your life. I feel that if I wasn't meant to sell real estate, that I would have never received that check in 2016. That I would have gotten out of real estate, probably worked at a restaurant, serving for the time being until I could figure out what I wanted to do with my life after that. But that didn't happen. It didn't need to happen. I basically got everything I ever wanted because of that check. And the most valuable thing that I gained because of that was my new mindset, was my new perspective. So if you think that things just constantly happen to you, that nothing good ever happens in your life, that, you know, it's um, Murphy's Law, right? Things just keep going wrong. I, I urge you, I really do, to just switch your mindset. Really tell yourself, things are going to work out. Not everything bad happens to me. Yes, there are some people that are on a more unfortunate path, but I think that the first thing that we can do to veer off that path, it starts up here. It really starts up here. It's in here. It's believing. And it's also believing in yourself. So, there you go. Shazam! I wish it was that easy. It does not. All right, so this is what we're working with today. No, I'm not wearing flip-flops to my open house. I got my heels in my bag, but I got a few errands to run before I get to my open house. Don't judge me, those are bags for Goodwill. If they're not sitting in the corner of your living room, they're sitting in your trunk for six months. Those have been there for about three, so I'm still doing pretty good. All right, let's go. Before heading to my open house, I had to go shoot some content at the Little Italy Farmer's Market for a video that I have coming out soon. It's great, I think it's the best one in the county. It's every Saturday. I highly recommend checking it out if you haven't, but I do also recommend getting here early so you can find parking and not have to deal with the herds of people. Ready? Ready. All right, so dropped off the pup at my mom's because she is sick. I just got over being sick. We were on a cruise, we were on an Alaskan cruise and something broke out on the cruise. I don't know what, but so many people got sick. I got sick towards the tail end, so at least I got to enjoy most of the trip. And it was the fifth day, it was a seven day cruise. So on day five, I was in bed for the next two days. So that was a bummer, but now my mom's sick and Willow is such a great dog. She should be um, it, like an emotional support animal, like a real emotional support animal. So I'm gonna drop her off with my mom. So my mom has some company for a couple days and she gets to snuggle with the pup, but on to the open house we go. And we made it. I wanted to talk about putting out open house signs. I have people ask me all the time if it's really necessary. It's a task that I think every realtor does not like to do. It's, it's annoying really, but I always ask people, what brought you to the open house? How did you hear about us? And most of the time it is online, my realtor sent me, whatever it may be, but 30% of the time or so, it's people going, oh, I followed the signs. So that right there still in this day and age where we use technology for everything and showing properties or looking at homes is not what it used to be. Your realtor used to have to send you homes back in the days, way before I started selling real estate. But a lot of people still follow the signs. So even though it is a task that 99.9% .9 of realtors do not like to do, it is so, so necessary 
to put these signs out. So I just finished that, opened up the house. Now let me talk about the house. So this is located in Oceanside, which is in North County Coastal of San Diego. And what's great about this property, it's a townhouse, it's three bedroom, it's listed under 700,000. It's in a good area of Oceanside. A lot of Oceanside has really uh, changed over the years. One thing I always remember about Oceanside being a kid is the McDonald's on the beach. <laughs> That's like the one thing I always remembered is Oceanside had the McDonald's on the beach. Well, now it has a whole lot more than that. And a lot of people are coming up here to specifically buy a property because of the price point because of the value so this home is a townhouse this community was built in 1978 it's three bedrooms it's almost 1400 square feet but the real cool thing about it is the hoa is still low so the hoa is at 330 a month and has a two-car detached garage and the garage is just right next door it's just detached so really great really private and if you're looking at this price point anywhere in the county it most likely is gonna put you into a condo or townhome, not too many opportunities for a single family home. But in this instance, you can get a three bedroom that feels like a single family home because it has a really nice big yard in the back too. So the value is definitely here in Oceanside. And we've been busy, we just went on the market a week ago. So I think we're gonna do just fine. Had some downtime at the open house today, so I popped open my computer to run some comps to prepare for a listing appointment that I'm going on this week for a single family home in Ocean Beach, so wish me luck. All right, we are done for the day. Well, we're done with the open house. We're not done for the day. And my favorite thing to do, flip-flops. When you stand all day in these, oh my gosh, some days I'm able to sit more than others when I'm at open houses. It just depends on the amount of people that come through, but I talk to people. Like I'll sit, they'll be sitting at the door <laughs> trying to get out and I'm still yapping. That's what I do. Build rapport with people that come through the house trying to answer all their questions. What drives me nuts is when I'm touring with my clients and we're going to open houses during the uh, weekend or we're showing, I'm showing property during open houses, that's better. And agents, don't even stand up. They just sit there. They'll look up from their phone and then maybe say hi. It's such a pet peeve of mine. So yeah, I'm gonna go pick up my signs now and then head back home. Only about 10 more to go. <laughs> it's dinner time. I'm gonna go out to dinner tonight. It is Italian. I am hungry because I have not eaten since that bagel this morning. And open houses wipe me out. It's something about being on my feet and talking to people the whole time. I get so tired when I'm done, but we're gonna go fill up on some pasta, bread, uh, maybe some carpaccio, which is my... Met a girlfriend for dinner tonight at Isola. It's one of my favorite Italian spots here in Little Italy. I didn't film a lot at dinner because I do not take my phone out when I'm with other people, but I do recommend checking this place out. They also have a great happy hour and who doesn't love that? All right, after dinner, which dinner was amazing, you can't go wrong with Italian food. Just the pasta and then the red wine. The red wine just hits different after like a full day. That first sip is like, so good, so good. I've cut back a lot though. I used to drink a lot of red wine and I don't drink it nearly as often. So two glasses and I am done. <laughs> like that is enough for me. But I came home for dinner. I had to finish editing a video. And so I just finished and this will be uploaded shortly. I also had to run some comps for a buyer of mine. They went and saw a property today in an open house. I would have showed them before the open house, but it was only available for viewings during the open house. So there's really nothing I can do about that because I did have my own open house. So they just went, toured it during the open house. They loved it. So now I'm kind of running some comps on the back end and then we'll see if they decide to write an offer. We shall see. This market's it's moving quickly. Homes aren't staying on the market that long. Uh, location, price point, if those two things check out, it's selling within a matter of a week or so. I look at the first video that I posted, which was only in February of this year, and then what I'm doing now, because I'm editing all of them, I'm doing everything, and I see so much of a difference. I can't believe how much I've learned in just these short, like four months. Uh, yeah, four months, so 
I, th I think it's pretty cool and I actually really enjoy doing it. It's very time consuming so we'll see how long I can actually keep up with this because this year has just been absolutely madness but I do love to be busy and I love to just be doing things. It makes me feel accomplished when I'm not doing things. That's when I just start getting in my head and I start feeling like I'm not doing enough. It's a problem but we live in America so. It's a common problem I feel that we feel, that we feel. But thanks for following along with me. I'm gonna do more of these, this was fun. And I'm gonna leave you the same way I always do, and that is to stay classy. San Diego, and a good night. <laughs>